Welcome to the BBC, a wax cast based on collaboration, not competition. Between Both Cheeks is a world filled with beauty, bums, and billions of bucks. The hosts of the BBC are Luba, the badass boss bitch, creator and owner of international brands and beauty salons. I feel like it was like a bad one night stand. Becca, the once newbie and now experienced enforcer, she's hatched out of her egg and manages business with authority and a smile. No more like, I'm gonna take on the world. And Ashley, a straight, shooting, spicy Italian. Hot off the global circuit, she's got expertise to share. Welcome to the BBC. Bring me your balls. Hello, everybody. This is the BBC. The big, bl- I mean, between both cheeks. <laughs> yes, we mean those cheeks, too. Thank you for having us on. You can follow us on Instagram at Between Both Cheeks and subscribe to our podcast on Spotify, iTunes, or iHeart. Or wherever you listen to your podcast. We are recording live from Vancouver, British Columbia. That is in Canada, for those of you that don't know. We have Holly. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Holly. (laughs) Holly the Herica. The token Aussie who's here to look after you down under. (laughs) And we have Becca. Hi, I'm Becca, and scissors make a sound like ch ch. <laughs> and I am Luba, yes, just Luba, kind of like Cher or Madonna. So today, on this wax cast, guys, did you know who's moving to town? Wow, yes, all my family keep telling me, have you seen Megan and Harry yet? Yes, they're, they're moving literally right down the store from, right down the street from the store. Really? Mm hmm. Wow. When? Do we know when? Because I thought Harry couldn't get a visa. Harry can get whatever he wants. His grandma wants the country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's going to move to a country with his grandma's face all over the money. Like, How cool that is weird? that? Oh, oh, that's gonna, cool. Oh, I don't know. Like, I think that's cool. I guess it depends what he uses the money for. I guess so. You can't roll it up and, you know, put things in your nostrils. <laughs> Okay. Like, um, we don't do that in Canada. <laughs> well, my goal is to bleach a royal ass. Yeah, she'll come. Wow. But which one? Harry or Meghan? Well, <laughs> first we're going to get rid of the Harry. Not the husband, but the hair. <laughs> and then I think we should bleach a royal ass. I think that'd be so cool. She's right down the street. Yeah, yeah well. Yeah. Put a flower in her mailbox and... <laughs> if we can yeah. get in. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Okay. Right? She's right yeah. next door, right next door. Yeah. To uh, Lululemon. Mr. Lululemon. Yeah. I know someone who's been to the door of his house, so if they live the next door. The door of his house? Well, yeah, but That's I'm sure close. he might have two doors, like a hedge door, a gate door, mm. and a door door. They do, they do charity, and they walk up and down that area asking for money, so maybe I'll... I was at a party next door to his house. Really? Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Who's yeah. party? Mm-hmm. Brian Jessel, shout out. That's where I bought my BMW. <laughs> <laughs> Way back in the day, back oh, in the day. Wow. Yeah, so shout out to Brian, but yeah, he was neighbors with them. Okay. Yeah. So he's a cool guy or is he creepy? He's awesome. Oh, okay. Brian's awesome. Oh no, Lululemon. I never met him. <laughs> I was next door to him, but oh, apparently okay. he works out at the same gym as me, so. Oh, yeah. really? Mm-hmm. That's far. Where? No, it's Where's like right in uh, ATP Fitness, like like right down the street. Oh, never mind. I was thinking of the one here. APT? Like, oh, ATP? Travels. Oh, God, that's really bad. Okay. Anyway, where Les is. Shout out to Les. He'll never listen to this because he doesn't even know how to use Instagram. But. Oh, we can teach him or go viral and someone will show him. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So if you hear your neighbor mentioned, <laughs> play it with a boombox outside their door. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got royals moving in. Yeah. Um, what else we got going on, you guys? We've had a busy week. Lots of changes. Lots yeah. of changes, yeah. New year. New year. New year, new us. Yes, New absolutely. brands. Yes, new brands. We've launched Bright. Yeah. Brightenup.com. Yeah. Bright is a professional skin brightening brand that we use to bleach assholes. And it could possibly be used on Meghan Markle because we do have other high profile clients. So yes. Who's we don't to talk say, about. Yes, exactly. Not with names. Um, <laughs> yeah.
yeah, but who's to say she's not in need? And they have children now, right? Or is she pregnant? I don't. They had. They had a baby. Oh yeah, then she'll she'll need it for sure. She'll need it. Yeah, documentation yeah. after pregnancy. Yeah. It's a major issue. That's what yeah. we do. Why we do. Messes you up. Yes. Okay. More ways than one. So last segment we left off, we had built the stores. Right, yeah. we were having a bunch of issues with anal bleaching in lovely Las Vegas, where you mm-hmm. could bring a hooker to your room, but you can't bleach an asshole. Yeah. So now it's taking off. And now it's taking off, right? So when you started the business, mm. what did you think your biggest concern was going to be? Not being busy. Not right. having a massive advertising budget. Um, mm-hmm. Being a small business. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, everything went into the build out, right? It's a quarter yeah. of a quarter for those of you that want to be a business owner, quarter of a million dollars turnkey. Turnkey means wow. you walk into a shell, there's nothing there, you gotta put the drywall in, you gotta put mm-hmm. the studs in, you gotta put the wiring in, the sinks, the stock, three months worth of wages up front. Yeah. Supplies everything, quarter of a million dollars. Um so there wasn't wow. a budget That's a really lot of butts to in American in American dollars. Uh, I think it was just under for America. That that was my Canadian okay. number. So let's say like I think I think Vegas was like one ninety something. Yeah. But you have to do the investing prior up front, two hundred fifty thousand up to front. Get to the, the yes, country. so okay. very true. Um, so that was my biggest concern was not being busy and paying off all of all of this money. Um, Vegas was a really great story because we were busy before we were even open because yeah. no one was doing the the anal bleaching. So that was really great. So that was my biggest concern, but it definitely wasn't the concern. The okay. Issue. <laughs> okay. So it was. You, okay, so you were busy then, obviously, and you paid off the debt. That's great. So what was the concern? So the, it, the issue really was employees. Mm. And that was such a shock to me because, you know, coming out of a toxic corporate environment and wanting yeah. to build this business of yeah. having um, a healthy, fun work environment and safe work environment for women... Um, I didn't think I would have that issue. The issue. Uh, I also am, am not an esthetician. Yeah. So I'm not in the brain of an esthetician. Uh, and I, I came to realize very quickly that it's a very transient industry. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also building a business from the beginning, there's a lot of work that goes in at the beginning. And not yeah. everyone is, in, is, is as invested as you are as a business owner to stick through all of the shit that you have to go through to get to where... That's like, right. We're finally kind of at a spot now where there's immense growth to have in all different areas of the business that you kind of want to be in, training, development, wholesale, in the stores, Mm -hmm. manual, right? Like whatever it is, there's so much more now, but no one wanted to be a part of it at the beginning. Yeah. So I listen to podcasts and interviews with business owners out there, entrepreneurs of small businesses that talk about... I love my team. Everything is so great. Yeah. There's roses everywhere and rainbows. <laughs> and I honestly sit back and I'm like, that's such a load of shit. Yeah. Like it really I love is. The time it can be, yeah. And no disrespect to my current team because we have an incredible team in mm-hmm. Las Vegas right now. We have an incredible team in Vancouver right yeah. now. I'm very, very blessed. But there's, there's highs and lows for any any business and, and keeping staff and hiring mm-hmm. the right staff and getting the right team. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And from my experience of traveling around to different businesses and training the staff, quite often the management teams and the owners are asking me advice like, how do I get, where do I get these girls from like where do I get good estheticians from like you're dealing with the schools can you send me this the girls I think as you said it's a very transient industry it's hard to find uh, the right team and I don't know if it's a generational thing or if it's our industry and if anyone has anything that they'd like to shed some light on <laughs> absolutely I, you I, know I would really love to know or if you have you know if you have a question hopefully we can answer it but I'd love some advice around this too because I feel like the more we give to these upcoming estheticians the more that they take and it's very hard when we work in a female dominant industry to say don't take it personal mm. but there's always, you know, the personal aspect involved. And you think that you're a good manager or you're a good business owner, 
and you're offering them all great working conditions, you know, above award wages, um, perks of the job, a great roster, all of the things, and then they don't want to stick around. So I'm at a bit of a loss with that as well. Like, how do we improve this? I've always said that women have broken my heart far more times than a man ever will or ever has. Yeah, totally. And that's a really shit thing to say, Same, yeah. but it, it, it's very true. Like I've laid awake at night wondering like, what did I do wrong? Why did this yeah. person leave? Why are they so distraught? Um, I've, you know, I've gotten to a point where I've opened my home and I've allowed employees yeah. to live in my home wow. when they didn't have places to go. Was that pushing it 1000 percent yeah but that's the type of person Mm. i am that's what i mean about the more you give um Mm. the more people take and i think you know sometimes as a manager or a business owner we think that we know what people want but then we give it and then Mm -hmm. we think well maybe we should be um you know more strict or not as forgiving or you know, not giving them free reign, I guess, because Mm -hmm. maybe people need that. Maybe people need a little bit more structure. Maybe they need to be told no. Maybe that's how you gain respect. And Maybe they're submissive. Yeah. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Like, maybe this is the way that they operate Uh because obviously, you know, coming from, from backgrounds, corporate backgrounds, where you're not always told yes or you're not always given perks or you know free range in your job I don't I don't know the answer to that one well one of the things that we just talked about in our recent staff meeting was I've always been the person of yes there isn't a whole Mm. lot of times that I've said no yeah and when you when I've actually had to say no because there's just no one to work or there's something right for sure all of a sudden I've become the worst person ever what's your nickname oh my god going there yes. wow God. okay so you want to talk about you know breaking hearts and how I've been like hurt by women that I've employed that I've actually helped pay their rent and put food on their table yeah, your friends with mm-hmm. um there was there was an incident where it was a brand new employee too I think she was with us she was she didn't pass probation less than three months and she didn't show up for a mandatory staff meeting so yeah. mandatory means mandatory yeah. you're paid to be there it's yeah. a regular shift it's just work. Yeah. and she didn't show up and she had texted one of the girls during the staff meeting because i said can you please call her text her whatever she texted during the staff meeting and said i'm not i'm not showing up so what's luba gonna do fire me oh <laughs> yes now. so the Disrespect. next right Gosh, so the next months. day i um i went i was heading to vegas we had a flight early in the morning and i wrote her an email and i said Um, due to the abandonment of your position, aka you didn't show up for your job, um, I'm terminating your employment with us, we wish you all the best, this and that. And she went on every form of social media at that time, so it was like Yelp, Google, Facebook, and Twitter, and wrote that working for Luba is like working for Hitler with tits. Whoa. And that was, yeah, so the gays, my gays... (laughs) My gays named me Titler because they were trying to actually have like fun with it, but it was like it was devastating <laughs> to read that about yeah, yourself. Especially when you know you're trying to be a boss who never says no. Yeah. Or, yeah. You yeah. know, gives the team what they want, but yeah. it small can business backfire. is hard though because you know everyone like well and you know their personal lives and you know what's going on. So and they know you too, like. Mm-hmm. Not only as a boss, but just as another person. So it's a very blurred line, and yeah. it's, it can be very gray. We so in October we went to a Jonas Brothers concert, mm. and who, I had who a sent you there? Luba did. <laughs> She's the best boss ever. It was great. The whole thing was a surprise. I had no friggin' idea until we were there, and I had a couple of be- like beverages because we were in Vegas. And we get there, and Luba's partner asked me. I was sat next to him, and he was just asking me. It was our first time really meeting. And he was like, "Oh, like, what are your plans? What are your future plans? Wait, what wait, do you Luba's do? partner was at the Jonas Brothers concert. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, he was a fan. Oh, he. Was, I think he was a babysitter. He's a fan. He was. He was a babysitter and a chaperone. But wait, Holly, so, what? Who? Who is yeah, my partner? What, what's what's his, his nickname? His nickname now is my producer. <laughs> I love the way she says it. Say again. My producer. Again. <laughs> My producer. <laughs> can we get a clean cut of that? Just my producer. There we go. Now I can put it anywhere. <laughs> but I was chatting with him about 
future plans. He was just like, oh, get to know me. Like, what do you want to do? And I was like, oh my God, I want to own one of the wax stores. Like, I want to own one. I oh, want okay. you and Luba's life. And how many and times has Luba heard that line? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure a ton. But now, <laughs> I do not want to own a store. Uh-huh. Like, no way. I could not be my own boss. I no. And you're the egg. I'm, yeah. You're new to this. Yeah. They're, Think that, of this for 12 that years. That was like, we were like, drinking like right before oh no we weren't because in vegas you're allowed to just drink in public and so we could just take our <laughs> free drinks like <laughs> in it was wild every single time i was like wait we can bring this with us we don't have to like mm-hmm. chug it in an alley <laughs> canada yeah. is so different chug it it's scallop oh uh, scallop, scallop. yes yeah. that's scallop. what you do in australia you scallop it because it. it goes to your skull <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yes yeah, so i think that's the only time i've had a desire to own a store because for 30 seconds that was yeah yeah, yeah. I was like, wow. I was just so passionate about having a unibrow and then not. <laughs> it's like it could make such Change a the difference. Way. One yeah. unibrow at a time. Yes, exactly. It could make such a difference <laughs> in people's lives. Well, it's um, definitely not definitely easy don't. being an entrepreneur. I think this is kind of the new trend word that's out there right oh, now. Oh, yeah. Um, so no one is really like an Instagram model anymore. They're an entrepreneur. Um, they're doing multi-level marketing and they're an entrepreneur mm-hmm. or they're a cocktail waitress and then they've got like a side hustle on the side and they're like an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. That is not what it is. It's called moonlighting really, isn't it? It, re- it really is. And I had just posted on my personal social, I'm going to see if I can find it really quick, the other day and it said, the funniest shit I've ever heard is when somebody says, I want to be a business owner because I want the freedom to make my own hours. Yes. So not true. Mm-hmm. Um, you're consistently working all the time. Your mind does not shut off. Um, perfect example of this. And I don't want to cry when I say this, but um, I lost my mom last year, but less than, less than a year mm-hmm. ago. Mm-hmm. And I literally had a bunch of staff walk out. And the night that I got the news that she had died, everyone called out the next day. Oh. And eight hours later, I was in the store and I was bleaching assholes. Yeah. Like, and you can say that it's funny, right? Yeah. But it's not. that's the no, shit that you have not. to do. That's your life. That's actually your life. Yeah. Exactly. And you were in a different country. But that's the shit that you have to do to make things work because nobody cares at the end of the day. Mm, yeah. No mm. one cares. The no one cares. Does. Yeah. Right? Oh, God, it's the alcohol. <laughs> right? But, I mean, no, this, this, but this is the real life stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. This, is, this is the stuff that they're not showing on Instagram and they're yeah. not showing... No one you talks know. about that. It's when it gets hard, you just see like the tip of the iceberg above the That's water, right. not and we are hundreds of meters below. And speaking of, you know, being an entrepreneur or an influencer or whatever, we all put our best foot forward. Like we all look like we have a great life mm-hmm. on social media. We're not going to post, you know, personal things or, or hardships like that. Mm. But these are the struggles that people need to understand. Like you need to be willing to give up everything to make it work. Yeah. And it's hard, particularly if you're running a business that you have to employ and maintain staff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this was the idea when the three of us, four of us with the producer, say it? My producer. (laughs) My producer. Uh, Really pushed us to do the podcast was we talked about all this stuff about all of the struggles, you know, that we have as managers and directors and and owners and eggs. (laughs) Yeah. Um, that no one talks about. Like you literally listen to interviews and podcasts out there about people talking about how amazing it is to be an entrepreneur. No, oh, yeah. But they don't talk about the stuff about. How yeah, no, I had to go it? in and pull myself together. Yeah. And what did I take that day? It was like a Xanax. Oh. Yes, <laughs> Xanax, and I went in yeah. and I started bleaching assholes. Um, you got through that day. I got One through day the day. Time. That's it, That's all right? You can do. Same thing with you know building the stores. I only had. No one would rent, would rent me an apartment because they were in the recession, right? Mm, right. So no one would rent me an apartment. Um, I could either sleep in my car yeah. or I could rent or I could go to a hotel room as long as it was within my budget, which was of course. $35. Wow. A night. Mm-hmm. Which is not... Insane. And that, that sounds really crazy because that would never happen in Vancouver, but in Vegas, <laughs> hotelstonight.com. <laughs> um, and obviously because of the recession, they were they were really suffering and mm. we got some really great deals. But when I couldn't get within that budget of like the $35, $40 range, 
I would go to some sketchy places. Yeah. Um, wow. And I remember this one place that I stayed at. Yeah. It was the first time I pushed my dresser up against the door because yeah. I was oh so gosh. scared. Yeah. Right? No one talks about that stuff. No. Right? Yeah. People see all the fun I'm stuff on Instagram and think that you have all the money in the world and that every penny that... You know, people will look at sales at the end of the day. Oh yeah. And say, oh and my god, we, really we did fifteen hundred dollars yeah. or eight, whatever that number is, and think automatically that every single that penny goes into my pocket. No, mm, no. When that is not the case. Yeah. Expenses, cash flow, small business. The, the hardest challenge for any small business, cash flow. Yeah. So yeah. How do cash you, is queen. How, yeah. How do you how do you deal with that? When you've got bills to pay and wages to pay and. Yeah. All, everything okay. right and one month can be really good and then one month yeah. can be really bad and we've just experienced that recently right yeah um, so it's nothing is ever consistent nothing is ever mm. guaranteed um, opening up the, the stores too and deciding what lines I wanted to carry yeah. um, that was a big you know cash flow issue too eminence organics I think which we still carry to this day yeah they're great they're so great um, I think their <laughs> opening order if I remember that long ago it's I think I want to say 7,000 if that yeah. it may have went up from there yeah but I think the opening order was seven grand that doesn't sound like a lot of money but as a struggling small business owner yeah that's a shit ton of money yeah you're trying um, to get off the ground before yeah. you have much traction if exactly you're not no nope. you know, clients you weren't walking established into, yet. Exactly, especially in Vancouver. Yeah, but um, you need those brands to attract the cash mm-hmm. flow, and it's a catch twenty. Yeah. Then we had I brought in Jane Ardell because that was one of my personal mm-hmm. favorite makeup lines. Yeah. Um, and that was I think another ten grand, five grand, something like that. So right away, just before you even open up your doors, you're oh, in yeah. a ton of money. Uh, Eminence was amazing. They come in constantly. They do training oh with God. us. Yeah. Victoria, shout yes. out to her. She's a great Hello, rep. Hello, Victoria. She's she amazing. Calls us, like every three weeks. Yes, Lisa in Vegas, who's incredible in gym. So shout out to them. Yeah. So they're and cost- Jay in Vancouver too. Jay and Victoria. There's two. Okay, perfect. There we go. For saying two for Vegas. Yeah. For saying two yeah. for Vancouver. <laughs> but we have, so as you can see, we have several reps that they call yeah. in all the time. They come in quarterly. They give us train yeah. like in store training. Yeah. Um, they constantly have great POP marketing material. They're they're really great in understanding what you need. Yeah. yeah. Then I had a very different experience with Jane Ardell. <laughs> so they actually said to me that because my volume was so low in sales that I didn't warrant a store visit. Even um. though... And, and to these kind of people, sales means what you're purchasing from them, not what you are making at the store. Right. Yes. So that's a clarification. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the rep was actually driving right past our store to get to one of her top accounts. And I was like, you couldn't just pop in, pop in and <laughs> grab a Starbucks next door? Oh, wow. Like, why wouldn't you do that? Because to me, the re- minutes is all it would take. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And to me, that's not the right answer. From my background in, in sales and marketing the right answer is I'm not going to come see you because you're not making your target. The right is the right how answer is how can we help you? Yeah. yeah. What, how can what we do you build need? this account? Yeah. Can we come in and do some sales training? This and that. So yeah. I so I discontinued the line. Yeah. yeah like I just I, I won't deal with people like that. No, because it doesn't make you feel good because they should be valuing you as much as you're valuing the brand and that's why you carry it is not only for the product but you know the brand and the people behind the brand and mm-hmm. the experience of it. Yeah. So bad. <laughs> so yeah. So those are those are some struggles as an owner. Mm. The so then line. moving into like contract manufacturing and making your own brand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, how do you decide who's gonna take on that responsibility? What do you mean, like finding finding the right company to align with, like? Obviously, there's minimum orders, but you still. How do you find like what you want to carry? Or store what we want to carry I mean like, so if we talk about like bright and the skin lightening yeah is that kind of it yeah um why well, I think but still but you're getting that off the ground so you're mm-hmm. a small fish in a big ocean yeah so how's that experience wow god it's been it's been really different it's been really mm-hmm. different and I think when I look at again when I, if I go back to my past mm-hmm. I had volume that's right. Yeah. Volume. I had a always. name behind me. I had volume. That's right. 
I couldn't. I don't want to say demand, company. but you did. yes, you I, did. I would sit across this the is a huge company. I would sit across the table and be like, yeah. "This is how many I need, yeah. and this is what I'm willing to pay for it. Take it or leave it." Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So and now you're on the other end of that because you're mm-hmm. starting from scratch, so you know that your volume's not going to be mm-hmm. as big from the get go. But you're building towards that, and yeah. they don't know how your future's going to go. So no. how's that experience? So it's, I would say it's better now, Yeah. but at the beginning it was a major yeah. learning curve and it was really putting my ego to the side. Yeah, for sure. So that was a big part of it. Like I didn't understand. Yeah. Why aren't they talking to me? I remember I used yeah. to come home and Jake was like, you have one store. <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> exactly. But do they know what I did before? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so really and like... Ego putting... to the side for sure is a good way to, to sum that up because you're on the other end of the scale now. Yeah. But we all have to start somewhere mm-hmm. and relationships speak volumes. Like you want to align yourself with suppliers and distributors that, you know, have the same the same values that you do, I guess. Yeah, same values and vision. And you know what something that I always said was that you never know what can happen and, and what someone can do for you as far as like I always talk about my, my stores as in not my stores now, but the stores that I used to have that I used to work yeah. for. I used to rank them in volume of A, B, and C. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So not only would I rank them in volume, but I would rank them on, I don't want to say the word personality, but uh, drive. Drive yeah. and motivation, right? Yeah. And I always said that you can't take a C and make them an A. No. So whether that's volume or attitude, mm. you can't take a C volume store and make them an A, but you can take a B and a, you can make them yes. an A. Yeah. So it's about working with suppliers that have that mindset that, hmm, you know what, she only has two stores, mm. but she's pivoting. And she's doing something else with the brand as far as education, development, product development. And I can see this going international. So therefore, I'm going to return a phone call. Yeah. I'm going to pick up the phone. You don't know. I'm going to go have a meeting with her. It's interesting that you have an A, B, and C because I have A, B, and C for the way that I grade clients. Oh! Because uh, oh. you, you have your A grade clients, you have your A grade clients that come in every four weeks, the clients that the new hottest thing that you put on the shelf they want to know about, the new special for the month they want to know about, any new service they want to know about. You have your B grade clients that are, they are loyal, they come regularly, but maybe they just get that Brazilian wax or you not you might be able to add on the old eyebrow, but they're not going to branch into facials maybe. Oh. And then you've got your C grade. My lovely secrets. Mm. See you next Tuesdays. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> or Sometimes not quite. they can be. Not yeah. quite. They're just not the loyal, um, <laughs> complainers. Group on shoppers. As well. Group, Group on, on shoppers. Yeah. So yeah. you know that you're never gonna turn them into an A, but your B grades you can turn into an A. And it's the same it's the same philosophy, so it's just really interesting because we've never actually okay. discussed that. There we go. That message. So before. just a side note, while we're speaking about Groupon, because mm. I didn't know that and I'd like for consumers to know and keep in mind that how it works on the business side. Great point. So yes, because I think that could be mm-hmm. important. So if you do buy a Groupon for a business or a service or whatever, please, if it's a tipping culture, tip those people or expand your purchase into other areas because the business owner doesn't make money off of the So Groupon. let's let's it's break this down because yeah. this is a really, really good point. So no one knows about it. I don't. I don't have anything against Groupon. I've probably that's used, a great idea to it's charge brilliant. people. It's brilliant. Their um, business models. I probably fabulous. used Groupon. I think maybe last year was last time I like, yeah, personally we still get used Groupon it. People, and some of them are fine. Like it's not to say that it's a judge of character, but but just the breakdown. So let's just take an even number here. So let's say a Brazilian is fifty dollars. Yeah. Okay. Groupon will take that and they'll discount it by fifty percent. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so the consumer is buying it for 25, 25 okay? Yeah, yeah, to attract them. We pay, and I negotiated really, really hard for this amount, um, we pay Groupon another twelve fifty on that. So my take home oh. is twelve dollars and fifty cents. That is not an, that's not even enough to pay for the supply and the, the wage. wage of the wax bird. Wow. Yes. So it's yeah. it's a loss coming in. Yeah. No one realizes that because they're paying oh, yeah. $25 and they think, of course, just like anything, entrepreneur is rich and they have all this money and they, you know, I deserve yeah. the best. Yeah. Um, they don't realize that we're getting less than 
has. Yeah. Yeah, you you go to Groupon in hopes of attracting new customers and clients course, and people yeah. to your business that will stay beyond that Groupon expiry date. Mm-hmm. And usually that's not the case. It can be. But I didn't know that. And yeah. I've definitely So twelve fifty. And that's yeah. fighting hard. Yeah, so yeah. So that's even less than that. Yeah. yeah. So I but I do I do love Groupon in a certain way for new businesses and this is the way that yeah. I was able to use it and I, I'd like to share it for all the business owners that are out there that are thinking about it. I think Groupon's really great to use as a mar- as a marketing campaign yeah. when marketing. you open. Yeah. Yeah. Oh for sure. Okay. Make it so, attractive so yeah. print is come. out. Oh, yeah. No one's really doing a whole ton of radio ads. Oh, yeah. No one's taking out billboards, or you, you you can't afford to take out a billboard as a small business owner. This is one of the ways that their database is so valuable. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. almost like the loss is worth it up front because yes. of all the connections you can make. But then what we would do, so stats show that if you can get a client in your door three times, yeah. you're most likely to keep them. It's an 86% yeah. you'll convert. chance that you'll convert them. If you're nice and fair and right so the biggest thing for me is okay i'm going to take them in for twelve dollars i'm going to yeah. lose money but i have them in my store yeah. of course. that's the biggest thing yeah so they get to experience the wax they get to experience front desk they get to experience the technician then from there we would say to them if you reschedule now for your next appointment yeah, we will discount. give you the same price that you paid on groupon okay. but now that's i'm good. not making the 1250 i'm yeah. making the full 25 yeah so yeah, better better yeah. still not doing great yeah, but yeah. better and they're booked in so that's number two number three they've already gotten an email from us saying thank you for being a new client and there's some sort of promotional yeah thing that we've sent out from our email blast so that's the third time to get them in okay and then our retention on Groupon I think was something crazy like 76 percent 75 percent okay but I would not do it as an established business no um yeah, I would literally just use it for a new marketing Getting campaign. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And as a consumer, it's great to try different things or new things or new places without breaking the bank so much. Yeah. yeah. But you just have to keep in mind that it's not exactly in the favor of the place that you're going to. No. no. And what I found too is, and you guys probably notice this if you use Groupon, is if you're a Groupon client, you are treated really differently. And that's one thing that I used to always preach to yeah. the girls. Like, when you see that it's a Groupon, yeah. don't treat them differently. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, give them the same experience yeah. because... I've been broke, too. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was it. As long as you're kind to the people that are servicing you, they right? should be kind back. And if they're not, don't go there again. <laughs> so that's how you rate your clients, A, B, and C. Mm. There you go. Yeah. Same thing. You want to turn them all into A grade clients. No one wants the C grades. So I want to talk about Holly as a client. Oh, a client? Yeah, because I just got some information the other day. Oh. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. So <laughs> sorry. sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, she doesn't even know. It hasn't clicked yet. Oh my God. Oh, what, what are you talking about? Well, I heard that Holly oh. has the most perfect vagina. Oh my God. <laughs> Are we adding this to my dating profile? It should be. It should be in your bio. Okay, so this is, we went to brunch over the weekend, and this is coming from one of our oh wax God. birds, who obviously, you know. My mom is you know, listening to this. So is Thank mine. You. you got it from your mama. Yeah. You probably did. Thanks, mom. Shout out yeah. to Holly's mom for it's the perfect compliment. vagina. It's a compliment. It's good. Uh, but, so this wax bird waxes Brazilians all day, every day. She has seen a lot of vaginas. And <laughs> we were at brunch, and she's like, you know what, Holly? It was like real heart to heart, too. It was quite emotional. It's like, you have the most perfect vagina I have ever seen. Like, oh it is God. beautiful. <laughs> and if somebody, like, that's like a doctor saying that to you. When I got an IUD put in, you know what they told me about my uterus? It was unremarkable. <laughs> what? Which in like medical terms, I guess that's good because it doesn't mean there's anything there. But I was like, you have an unremarkable. You don't have another name. word to use than unremarkable. <laughs> like you could just say looks normal, like nothing to be concerned about. You don't have like masses or yeah, unremarkable. I was so pissed off for like a week. <laughs> really? Yeah, I'd be happy. Was, oh my god. Yeah. Unremarkable. An unremarkable year. So you have a perfect vagina. Yeah, that's great. Right. Thanks. That's guys. great. Thanks. <laughs> So that's how close we are at yeah. Wax. Yeah. Every, oh, we we all get had, well, everyone has seen my vagina and my butthole. My motto has always been to all the girls that I train, you have to get on the table and feel it. 
Yeah. Otherwise, how because are you I can about I it? can teach you something, you know, 10, 20 times, but until I actually feel you doing that to me, I'm gonna know if, yeah. Yeah. if you've understood. What needs to change? Yeah. Or... Exactly. So yes, I let the girls wax me, and yes, I have to get waxed somewhere. So. So I used to be really weirded out by this because I'm not, I'm not an esthetician. Yeah. So. So getting naked on the So table. getting naked, and then I would always think like what if I need to discipline someone or if I need to fire someone and like two days ago you were waxing my vagina that's really weird (laughs) I'm old AF now and I don't care I mean that's how you and I met yeah I'm waxing in a hotel room let me see your vagina (laughs) really so is it perfect yeah that was okay I don't know (laughs) <laughs> Clearly not as perfect as Holly's. <laughs> oh, it was Holly waxing you. Mine, oh. yes. But, but this yeah. is really like we all wax each other. There really is no, no shy no, factor it's not weird. whatsoever. It's no. it's not weird, and that's the weird part is that it's. Not that's much. the cool part. Who yeah. else can really say that? Yeah, right? it's like yeah. After you do it once, it's not weird anymore. Well, cheers to Holly's perfect vagina. Oh, there cheers. You go. Thank you guys. Oh, the YouTube, the, U- the YouTube comments are going to be rolling in oh now. Oh, my God. Oh. Are we going to see you on Pornhub? <laughs> okay. Well, well, if you are well, actually on Pornhub, Holly is on there. So happy hunting. <laughs> Oh so God. thank you for joining oh. us for this episode of the Wax, Wax Cast. Wax Cast. This is Between Both Cheeks. You can subscribe on our website, betweenbothcheeks.com, or follow us on Instagram at Between Both Cheeks. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about all the shit that happens between both cheeks, please literally. Us. literally. Yeah. And we'll talk about it maybe if it's good. <laughs> thank you.